Hey everyone, Cadams Tech here. So in today's video, I want to discuss what is a back-end software engineer. But first, if you're new to my channel, my name is Chris Adams. I am a senior full-stack software engineer living in the Tampa area. My goal for this video is to provide you with some useful information, and if you feel like you've gotten any, remember to like, subscribe, and share this video with anyone that you know is interested in learning development. All right, so back-end engineer, back-end software engineer, back-end developer, back-end dev, right? These are all used interchangeably. The primary responsibility of a back-end engineer is to essentially accept some data from the front end, manipulate that data, transform that data into the way that it can pass it off to store in the database, right? So what are some responsibilities of a backend engineer? What are some of the criteria to become a backend engineer? Well, you need to learn how to build out APIs, application programming interfaces. And this is essentially routes that the front end would hit. So let's say we have a slash register route for when you're signing up for a new, uh, let's say Facebook or Instagram or something like that. And you click the submit button. It's going to package up that data, send it off to the server. That's where the server comes in. That's where the backend engineers handle this data. So they grab the data in the route, they manipulate it, they transform it, they can validate it. And what I mean by this is validate, they make sure all the criteria is met. And if it's not, they'll send a response to the front end saying, hey, this hasn't been met. And their message might be displayed there. They'll massage the data, transform the data. And what I mean by that is they'll take it from the one form on the front end, they'll change it into different ways that they need it. And then they'll pass it onto the next step. So the next step would be to insert it into the database. So backend engineers will be responsible for creating models. This essentially models what the data will look like. So we have different fields and values for the field. So key value, so first name, and then Chris, and then last name, and then Adams. They take this and then they insert it into the database. This might involve writing SQL queries. And SQL stands for Structured Query Language. And this will allow you to work with databases, insert records into databases, grab and retrieve records from the database, update the database, delete the database record. So it's CRUD, create, read, update, delete. Create, insert into the database table, read, retrieve the information from the database table, update, transform, hey, first name was Chris, now it's first name is David. And delete, hey, let's delete this record completely from the database. So that's the bulk of it. There's a lot more going on behind the scenes. Uh, there's a lot of stuff involved. I mean, there's middleware that you can create, and this is something that you can add to each of your routes. So slash register, hey, let's perform some authentication and authorization. Hey, let's set permissions. So there's a lot going on there. I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of it, but high level, this is what a backend engineer is. Now I should also say that there is another segment of being a backend engineer, and that is DevOps, right? So DevOps typically consists of setting up infrastructure. We're talking about Docker, we're talking about Kubernetes, we're talking about clusters, we're talking about setting up the environment, AWS and Azure, so that way the web application can run smoothly. We're talking about dedicating different amounts of resources to things. We're talking about, um, I mean, a lot of different things go on with DevOps, right? So that is a segment of backend engineering. So overall, it depends where you want to go with backend engineering route. You could stick to the programming, the massaging data, working with databases, or you could go full DevOps and just focus on DevOps, setting up infrastructure and things of that nature, or you can do both. They have some overlap. You can do what I just mentioned for backend engineering and incorporate some DevOps into your workflow, right? So this was meant to be very high level, kind of get you a feel for it. If you have any specific questions, feel free to drop them down and I guarantee you I'll reply to them. I reply to every single comment that has been posted on my YouTube channel so far, and I don't intend on stopping anytime soon. So let me know if that helped clear it up for you all. Remember, if you got any value out of this video, like, subscribe, share with anyone that you know is interested in learning development. And until next time, see you all later.